Living in the same home for almost six decades, Lisa Liu is very content with her life here. Though Miss Liu takes lots of time traveling for productions and press events, she has always taken this place as her home, where she spent valuable time with her late husband, her children, and grandchildren. Thank you, Miss Liu, for having us in your home today. You're welcome. Thank you again. I mean, it's beautiful. And now you have had such an illustrious acting career, and you're really an icon to so many international audiences. And let's rewind back to your time before you were acting. Now, you were actually in accounting. So why did you stop doing the accounting? Well, since I was young, my mother wanted me to be a banker because I was good in arithmetic, arithmetic, and uh, also I am a very honest person. And uh, so she thought banking would be a good profession for me. So when I went to college, I majored in financial administration at the Jiao Tong University. When I was uh, working for the business firm, and I arrived to the stage that I was the second person next to the business manager. And, but I wasn't happy doing what I was doing. Oh, then when did you finally make the transition to acting? So my husband was very wise. Uh, so he told me, he said, I know you wanted to be an actress, but it's not so easy. You are now already 30 years old, and there are so many beautiful girls in Hollywood. So perhaps you should go and try. When you fail, then you would have no regret. Yeah. Wow. Well, do you remember what your first roles were like? First role was uh, with Mr. Frank Borzaghi. Frank Borzaghi is a very uh, famous and accomplished director. He's a graduate from the school I was attending for drama. At the time, he already won Academy Award. And uh, so my principal introduced me to him uh, for a job. But uh, when I went to be interviewed, uh, he said, oh, I'm sorry, because we already had the leading lady, Chinese leading lady, that is Li, Li Hua, and uh, we don't have any job for you, any roles for you. And uh, I said, well, the story takes place in China, so there must, have, must be some other chi Chinese characters I can play. So he said, well, uh, there was a part, a barmaid part. You don't look like a barmaid. <laughs> so I went home and I thought, well, I, I, I'm an actress, so I, I, could, I, uh, I should be able to play any role, mm -hmm. right? So I went back to see him again. Then he said, no, honey, because we're looking for somebody with a big bosom. Oh, no. <laughs> and you're not, you're not that way. <laughs> but then when I went home, I thought that's my only chance to be in, to be, to, to get a job. Because in those days, if you don't have a uh, SAG card, Screen Actors Guild card, you couldn't take any jobs. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, don't have a job, then the SAG Guild will not give you a card. Mm -hmm. So I went to see him again. I said, you are the only one I know in Hollywood, and uh, I have this problem. But can you make this barmaid a, uh, a, a uh, not so sexy person? <laughs> 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 Physically, I cannot change. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so he said, well, OK, OK, you got the part. But afterwards, he told me, he said, you know, you have talent. Mm. You will have a career. And then how did you make yourself stand out? And what did you think directors were looking for most? Were they looking for people with talent or people with a certain look? And again, how did you make yourself stand out? Well, I think the director would look for somebody who fits the role <laughs> first, and then the person must have also talent. Um, in those days, I think 
uh, why people choose me because at the time I had the looks, I look younger than my age and uh, uh, I work hard when I never were late. I was always early and I always know my lines and I always can adapt. You know those days when you work for TV, they change the dialogue or they change the scene um, at, on the set, not filmed uh, f film, I mean script. Mm -hmm. So I was able to adapt right away and uh, so I established myself as a reliable actor and uh, they gave me a nickname uh, for uh, one take Lisa oh. and uh, then when you have that reputation people would look for me because I save money for them mm. um, so people usually um, would look for me to do the part. Buy me a drink? Yeah. Buy yourself a couple of drinks. Why you don't like me anymore? In those it's days, the roles are limited, and uh, the writers had no knowledge of Asian people, not, not much, because there's no communication in those days that uh, the China and the, uh, you, America has no diplomatic relations, and uh, people don't really know what Chinese people are, but all they know is Fu Manchu times, uh, Chinese, uh, the Chinese are very mysterious and the uh, uh, Chinese uh, are coolies or uh, laundry people or restaurant owners. That's all they know because that's, those are the people they contacted with. This has just arrived for you. Thank you. Hey, girl. A woman's handwriting. How old? Oh. A little over 30 years old, insecure, bites her nails. Sometimes they ask you to do things very odd. That's what they think Chinese should be like. Mm -hmm. And when I go back and look at old films, uh, the costumes and the dialogues, you never speak perfect English, always pidgin English. No. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's a period that uh, is hard. Mm. Well, during that period of time, when you saw that happen on set, did you try to give them your opinion of how it should be done differently? Was that possible? Yes, I always do, but very seldom they accept your suggestion. Uh, because uh, First, they are very experienced people. They think they know, they, yeah. you know, they know their business. So I'm only a new actress. But however, I always tell them what I think it should have been. Sometimes they listen to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And you really had the courage to speak up and tell them. Oh, yes. Because uh, uh, it's, as a Chinese, I think you want to be presented on stage or on, in the films, uh, the right image for Chinese. But you can only do so much. Mm. They have their own ideas how this part should look, this part should sound. What's your name? Ming Kwai. That means perfect flower in your country. In American cinema in the 1960s, there were only two relatively famous Asian actresses, Nancy Kwan and France Nguyen, who found success working in Hollywood. Millions saw their movies and their success reflected how people of Asian background could indeed make headway in show business in the Western world. As Lisa Liu describes it, there were not many Asian parts in Hollywood at the time, and for those roles, there were many, and in her words, more beautiful actresses. And though she had a reputation of being a strong actress, she had one more quality that she claims took her further in an industry so many were trying to get in. And in the industry, when it was competitive with those other Asian actresses, how did you always maintain that confidence that you were different from the rest of them, that you were the one who should always get the role? No, I don't think I have that kind of confidence. They are all very good actresses. 
It depends on, I think, um, how you portray that actor and what the director and the writer and the producer, in their mind, how they conceive this character. If your portrayal is close to their imagination, then you get the part. But uh, as far as they are concerned, they're all very nice people, very talented actors, actresses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I think my drive is stronger. Mm -hmm. I want it to be successful because I cannot fail. If I fail, then I have to go back to the business. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> Introducing Lisa Liu, most beautiful of Hollywood's new Oriental stars, found by the man who produced Sayonara. You are American, so go back to where the roads are safe. You can help us either. You were working with so many Academy Award winning people, and here you are, a new actress, again, with few credits to your name in this big movie. So where did you find that courage to work on set? Did you feel intimidated by them? No, because uh, I know I can portray whatever is needed in the script. And um, uh, there are scenes to be feisty, there are scenes to be uh, compassionate, because I've been through the war and I know um, in my heart what it's like. And uh, I, just, I just portray the person in that moment what the feeling should be. And there is so much truth to your performance. Yes. I don't think of them as Jimmy Stewart when the camera rolls. He's portraying his character. I'm thinking <laughs> of him as the character <laughs> I'm dealing with, right? That's the key. So, uh, yeah. Uh, he's a very cultured, scholarly person. In the early American entertainment business, the movie industries were run by the studio system, a term that refers to the practice of large motion picture studios between the 1920s and 1960s of producing movies with stars under often long-term contracts and manage even the most minute part of the actor's life. That started changing in the 1960s with the behemoth growth of television and people started staying home. The studio system was no longer viable, and more independent movies could now be produced. Even so, only few Chinese actors were allowed to participate, as most of the Asian parts went to Caucasian actors made up to look Asian. Lisa Liu had a front row seat in the ever-evolving movie industry at the time, when great change around the world was dominating the headlines. And you've also seen the Hollywood studio system grow and evolve and just basically undergo a a giant change into what it is now. So what is that like, having been there and having seen these movies start out from these small studios and these studios grow into these giants who produce blockbusters? Yes, uh, when I came, it was the star system. The stars, the, the studio groomed them and uh, planned for them what part they should play and build their reputation. So in those days you have very big stars, but now the system is changed. It's so different. Uh, so, so we don't see all those, uh, uh, the publicity machine is behind the studio. So they make you think what the star is like and they create everything to build the image for the star. But no longer that way now. Yes. And what do you think was the biggest change that you saw the studio system go through? Now, uh, every, uh, all the smaller pictures have, a, uh, have an opportunity to survive if they're really good. So I'm happy to see that, yes. Yeah, well, why do you think that is, that now they have the environment to survive when before they didn't have that? Well, because the uh, studio system no longer exists. There's no more Samuel Goldwyn, or there's no more my mayor or Cohen uh, controlling everything in the industry. Um, I think still the agency now controls everything, I think. But <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think they have as much power as the studios once had? or? 
they're not as no, powerful. It's a collective uh, power, not one person mm -hmm. uh, that controls everything. Though Hollywood had always been where actors go for work, there was a whole new cinematic world happening in the Far East. As Lisa Liu's name began to grow in Chinese films, the role she was offered challenged her skills as an actress. Lisa's work in The 14 Amazons, which no other Chinese actress wanted for vanity reasons, The Arch, a role she took to forward a certain director's career, and The Empress Dowager, had the public and fellow actors take notice. For each of these films, Miss Liu garners the prestigious Golden Horse Award, which is Taiwan's equivalent to the Academy Awards. As Miss Liu explains, her decision to take these roles was more out of necessity as work in America began to dry up. Well, then you won three Golden Horse Awards for Best Actress. So what went into your decision to take on those certain roles? And when you get many scripts, how do you decide again, the roles that you want to portray on screen? Well, I have no chance to uh, select. I was offered when I don't, well, I didn't have enough roles here. So I th thought I should uh, approach people in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, to do Chinese films. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky that Ren Ren Shaw gave me a job. But the role is for a hundred years old uh, Chinese general, uh, Shi Taijin. Uh, so nobody in his studio would want the role because they all want to be young and <laughs> beautiful. Nobody likes to have this role. So he offered it to me. I took it. For that part, I got a Golden Horse Award uh, for supporting actress. China is currently on track to have its biggest year at the box office ever, with revenue estimated to pass the $5 billion mark by year's end, securing the country's status as the second biggest film market in the world after the U.S. It's readily apparent why Hollywood and other markets outside of China would want their films to play there. It also demonstrates why there are more opportunities for actors in both China and the U.S. With more and more films being made in both countries, roles for Asian actors are more abundant than ever. And what do you think about the actors who are still starting out here in Hollywood who may be of Chinese descent? Do you think there are more opportunities for them in China or here in America? I think uh, if they are good, they have opportunities all over the world mm -hmm. because today when you look for an actor for the part, you don't look just in your own country. It's worldwide search for the talent to do the part. So uh, I think uh, we need more writers to write about Chinese people. We sh lack of script about mm. China. So I, I hope that there will be more script uh, correctly in uh, modif I mean, correctly present Chinese as they are, and their thinking, their culture, their background, and we need good writers. Mm. Well, I'm wondering if there were these scripts and these good writers, would they still be able to get the movie made? Do you think that the studios or the production companies in Hollywood today, they would still be open to making these scripts, even if they don't have the, the name attached to it, if they don't have a big Chinese star, if they just have the story? Do you think it would still have a chance to get made? Well, it depends. Um, it's a complicated uh, thing to put a picture into production and to release them with studios. Some pictures you, c you have it made, but couldn't find studio to really release it. Mm -hmm. So it's a complicated matter, but we work hard toward the goal that we will make good films about Chinese culture, mm -hmm. Chinese people, and um, the Chinese characters. Mm -hmm. um, we can only work hard toward that goal.
Men, you know, are not allowed in the forbidden city after dark. Even little men like you. The only man who can live here is the Emperor. But the Emperor is on high, riding the dragon now. He died today. Lisa Liu's career is not just limited to acting in period costume dramas made 40 years ago. She continues to be a viable character actress in both Hollywood and Asian films. A few years ago, she had a featured role in the big-budget Hollywood disaster epic 2012, playing an elderly woman who is trying to survive a worldwide natural disaster. She brought an earthy gravitas and presence to the movie so that her character didn't descend into typical silly stereotypes. She also co-starred in a lavish Chinese-language production of Dangerous Liaisons and recently enjoyed a recurring role on the daytime American soap General Hospital. These days, she continues to have tributes paid to her on Chinese television as a legendary actress who helped pave the way for other Asian actresses to find success and visibility in the Western world. What makes Lisa Liu unique is how she stays in touch with her Chinese and Asian cultural heritage. Now with you, you still travel and you are working on as many projects as you can. So can you tell us about your most recent project and your most recent travels? Yes. Uh, most recently I was in Australia. Uh, portraying a lady who takes care of the overseas Chinese students in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And all the crew are from Ch Hong Kong. They're so efficient mm -hmm. and so wonderful. And it was a very pleasant uh, experience. Uh, before that, I worked with, uh, last December, I worked with uh, Hong Kong crew and the Hong Kong stars in the 12 golden duck. Golden duck in Chinese means gigolos. <laughs> so I had 12 gigolos uh, around me and, and they, they tried to please me and, uh, uh, and uh, treat me well. Uh, before that, I was in Beijing in December, uh, Christmas time. Uh, doing a stage play. Uh, it's, it's seven and a half hours stage play. It's by Stanley Lai, uh, which I enjoyed very much. And then do you personally prefer being in this stage show and having the live interaction with the audience or being on a set and filming the movie? I prefer on the stage because I am my own master after rehearsal. Uh, but um, in the movies, I enjoy it too. If I have a good director, good cinematographer, good crew, because you depend on them to make you good, look good, or uh, act well. The editing will, will, will affect that. So actors in movies, uh, you, cannot, you cannot control everything. You can only give them the material. You can only act well. And how does the movie come out? In the final version, that's not your, you cannot control that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, the scenes you feel that you didn't do well, but after they're editing, you looked wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of editing. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You also help a lot of students from China who come to LA. So, what compels you to help these students who you don't know, these young aspiring filmmakers? and Again, students from China who want to make it out here in Hollywood. Yes, because when I started, I, know, I knew nobody. No one helped me, and uh, it was difficult. So whenever a young Chinese comes over and wanted to be, to be in this field, I would do my best to help them, yes to be a success here. It's not easy. Competition is so keen. Now, what do you find is one piece of advice that you keep giving them? Oh, work hard. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself. 
nothing you can gain without efforts. So just believe in yourself and work hard. And then and if you keep healthy. Oh. That's <laughs> most important. Without health, you cannot do much. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, what kind of advice would you give to your younger self if you could go back in time and speak to Lisa Liu before she started pursuing acting? What kind of advice would you tell her now? Oh, oh. when I started, uh, I work by myself and I work hard. And uh, I think now I know if you want to achieve good products, if you want to make good films, you need, you need, you need a, comp a good company. You have to ha have a team. Uh, team. Huh? Team. Yeah. You have to establish a team to work together. A single person will not really achieve much. You cannot. You need a team to work together. So I hope that all the young people will work together, actors, scriptwriters, cinematographers, and uh, producers. We will all work together to create a perfect, a good film. And then we know that you have a singing background. Do you still practice singing in your free time, in your leisurely time? Yes, I practice singing to build my uh, uh, voice. So when I go do the stage play, I can speak louder. I can reach the last role of the auditorium. I also know that you have a lot of music on your iPad and your iPhone and your devices that you carry around with you everywhere. And what's that like? Do you practice? Do you listen to the music when you're on the plane? How do you I, use the music every day in your life? Yes. Uh, I listen to the good singers and try to uh, try to see the style, to copy the style, the good style, and then I sometimes when I get a script, I would record it into the iPad uh, to listen to it and to correct myself. And uh, yes, uh, the iPad is a great help for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've really settled here in Los Angeles. Why did you decide to make your home here? Because the action is here. <laughs> Yeah, if you want, uh, if if you want to go to all the auditions, it takes time because Los Angeles is so big, so I can't live too far away. Then you, it takes too much time to you to travel on the road. Mm -hmm. And our last question is: What surprises you most when you go back to China? How many uh, well-trained actors there are. And everyone I met, they all, uh, they are all very wonderful actors. And I hope they will have a chance to really show their talent. Yes. Well, I'm sure they really look to you as a pioneer for pioneering diversity on screens and representing Chinese faces in the industry. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for coming to interview me. Currently, Lisa Liu is preparing to write a memoir and will continue expanding her Lisa Liu Film Foundation to more young Chinese filmmakers to pursue their dreams. She calls that a full circle of being an artist.